I.O. Yuring is getting better and better with every kernel release. This time, they enabled zero copy between socket buffers, uh, a very interesting feature that I want to explore. Let's jump into it. So this ja this comes from Foronix. I.O. Yuring bringing better send zero copy performance with Linux 6.0. 10. Let's read a little bit uh, of the a blurb of this article and then I want to talk more about what is zero copy and how it is really critical. Linux IO expert and subsystem maintainer Jens Xbo is basically the, the godfather of, uh, of IO Euring. He's the one who built it. Right? Has submitted all of the IO Euring feature updates ahead of the Eminent 610 merge window exciting exciting on the io uring front this cycle is to greatly improve the send zero copy performance this big performance improvement for zero copy send is thanks to coalescing of send buffers we'll talk about what that means no so here's a quote greatly improve send zero copy performance by enabling coalescing of sent buffers message zero copy already does that with send two and send message two but the io ring side did not in local testing the crossover point for send zero copy being faster is now around 3000 byte packets and it performs better then the sync syscall variants as well. This feature relies on shared branch with, uh, you know, by, by the branches. So I want to talk about the little bit more about this. So if you don't know, IO Euring is a, is an asynchronous interface that allows you to make system calls without blocking the client application or the client process you see when when you make calls like when you make calls like read accept you know write all of these are blocking operation that is when you make them the kernel switches into what we call the kernel mode it switches the cpu into kernel mode and it starts reading from the kernel code and you can't really do anything in that meanwhile because you, you're, the CPU is being elevated to read the, the upper section of the process, which is the, essentially mapped to the kernel code, and it's really dangerous. So you're, you're out of the user space. Now you can essentially access the system stuff and you start calling all this beautiful you know, code, the kernel code. Right? And when you do that, like doing a read from a socket, let's not talk about files for now, just like a socket, a connection, right? I'm, I'm reading data from this particular connection that I have on my backend application with a client, right? If you want to read, then there is a possibility that if there is no data, the client just didn't send you anything, you'll be blocked. That is, when you made that function, the rest of your code will not never be executed. That is, you're just sitting idle there as a process, right? And in, if that ever happens, the CPU will notice that, well, the kernel will notice that, and says, oh, well, get, get out, get out of this CPU core. This is a pressure core, pressure score. We can't really wait for you for doing I.O. Get out. Let me do my own thing. Let's bring in a better process that actually uses the cpu and that's basically uh, the blocking in that case so asynchronous came in with so many things you know approaches to solve this called epoll will first select then epoll and then finally io uring this is a whole episode by itself discussing all this that i just i talk about that in detail in my os course check it out os course dot when if you're interested to learn more about this stuff it's really a beautiful journey that the kernel developer went through to solve this you know to make it such that when i make a call and i'm about to be blocked let me know that i'm about to block so i can do other things you know or even better tell me that that this thing is ready that's epoch you know like here's a bunch of connections just tell me whatever is ready, I'm going to call them. I don't want to call read on a connection that is not ready and be blocked. 
So that's that's how we one way we solved. It. Well, that resulted in a lot of chattiness with the poll, so we moved to a, a completionist approach, just like Windows. Windows does that. Yeah? Like, let me you do the work. I'll just tell you what I want. Whenever you feel like it, Colonel, do the actual read. Put it in the in 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 some of put put the result in somewhere and let me read that result. Okay. So that's that's basically how in the very simple terms how IOU ring works. And and this is this is possible because the kernel and the user are sharing one memory. And this introduced so many, you know, security vulnerabilities that have been fixed, but it led Google to paying around a million dollars, you know, for for the security researchers who found these problems. So vulnerabilities. So Google decided, eh, let's just disable IOU ring because it's not stable yet. People, yeah, yeah. Google just didn't want to pay a lot of money uh, to find actually all these issues so they just to say oh whenever it's ready well it's gonna be ready <laughs> yeah so yeah uh and that kind of that kind of put a lot of uh, you know negative you know uh, negative connotation to iou ring unfortunately although it's a great product but it's getting better all these things bugs are always everywhere it's at the end of the day right yeah uh, you're gonna always if you if there is a new thing and it's popular, everybody will be on it and they will find issues. It's just the nature of the beast. Okay, so that's IOU ring. Now this let's talk about this particular enhancement, which is zero copy. To talk about zero copy, I wanna go to the white board. White board. Zero copy can be done by many methods. Send send message there's also send file altogether send send file all of that stuff this basically sends data from one socket to another socket so that is from one connection for example to another connection like hey whatever i received on this connection i want to pipe it to another connection right example is a proxy that's how proxies in a very layer four ish uh, approach that is I don't I just blindly read anything from the client side and then blindly write it to a backend, right? Connection. So you have two connections from one side and another, and I want to transmit the data, right? So how does that actually work? Well, without this, before we talk about zero copy, let's talk about what is copy, right? What is actually happening here? So what is the difference between a copy and a zero copy. So I drew a few diagrams here. I'll explain it here for the people listening in the podcast. We have, let's say, a reverse proxy. And you have an origin backend. And you have a client. So the client connects to the proxy. The proxy connects to the backend. And your job is simply anything that the client send, we want to send it to the origin backend. So technically, you as a reverse proxy can have... You have two connections. You have two sockets. One that is facing the client. We call this the front-end connection often. And then one that is the back-end connection or the upstream connection. So you have two connections, two sockets. And you want to send any data that comes from one socket to the where? To the back-end, to the upstream connection. Well, to do that, really, it's... It's an interesting operation. So, so how do I do that? How do I send data from one, the, from this connection to the upstream connection? Well, the, 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 the way we do it today, we forget about zero copy, is read and write. So you need to read from one connection, which, what does it do? What does a read do? Well, it's a blocking operation. Forget about now how blocking or asynchronous regardless. You read it. Where does it go? It goes to your user space because it's a copy. You're copying it from the kernel because where does the data live? Where does the TCP IP stuff live? It's in the kernel. Any data that you receive from the TCP or UDP goes first to the kernel and it's called the receive buffer of the connection. So it's, it lives there. So if you read it, then it, it is copied. 
to a buffer that you allocated with malloc in your user space, right? In your area. Because the entire thing that we're looking at here is, is one process. Even the kernel area, there is a tiny area, not really tiny, but there is an area that is mapped of your process mapped to the kernel space that you cannot access only when your process or the CPU is switched to a kernel mode. Then it's all of a sudden it's like, oh, I can see all of this stuff. You know, it's like a superhero getting all the powers all of a sudden and then forgets that it has a fire. That's the, how the your process feels like when it moves from user mode to a kernel mode. So you're copying this stuff only to just what? To write it back to the another stinking socket. Yikes. So this is not only, it, first of all, it involves a read to the CPU, right? Then it goes to the buffers of the CPU and then uh, the caches the registers and then there is another command that says okay now write it to a memory right this is the user memory then from the user space memory you write it again to another space in the kernel memory so that's another kernel switch not only you're incurring copies you're incurring kernel switchback switchback you're, you're, you're switching back from kernel mode to user mode Kernel mode, user mode. Because every time you call a system call, that's a switch, the kernel mode. So you're flushing few registers to memory. Because, uh, yeah, because the user, the kernel needs some of those CPU registers. So you're flushing those to the memory. To, to the, sorry, yeah, to the memory. So there is a cost to the kernel switch. There's a cost to copying, cost to all, the, all of this stuff. So there is a cost to everything. So that's, that's the nasty one, right? So you're copying data over a place. And then writing it to the, of course, once you write it to the send buffer, it will immediately just leave like the, like a train station, like a Shinkansen. We'll just like, ugh, we'll go to the back end. Now, zero copy, how does it work? Well, you told me that to send the data between this connection to this connection. Well, I, both of them live in the kernel, so I can play trickery. What I can do is, hey, I'll allocate an area and the address in the B, in the, in the upstream connection, and they just have it, because we're using beautiful virtual memory, have the address point to the same address that the receive buffer of the front end connection is. And all of a sudden, both of you are pointing to the same thing. Just like that, you did the job. No user data involved, no user space data involved, no copies, no kernel switch. Well, you did do a kernel switch to call this function that's called send to send data over. But that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And all of a sudden, woo, you switched. You just send the data. Now, so that's what zero copy is. That's one approach to do zero copy. There are many ways. There is DMA as well, that's zero copy. But this is how you do from one socket to another. And that's how I or you rank implemented this, right? Now, uh, there is a little bit more details, like when do you activate this mode, when it's actually worth it, right? Like if you have enough data in the, in the receive buffer, that is, you have a lot of packets and you start coalescing those packets, i.e. all these small segments, remove all their headers and put them in one big data with one header. That's called co TCP coalescing. Coalesce, group all of these to together. So one thing about zero copy that cannot always happen is TLS, SSL. If you want to send something from one data to another connection and you was using SSL or TLS, those guys, you cannot just take encrypted data from one socket, send it to another socket that is also encrypted. It doesn't make any sense. The backend is using completely different encryption key from the client, from actual origin client. So you cannot do that, right? So you have sometimes to copy it to user space to do OpenSSL because OpenSSL lives in the user space. It's just another application, the shared library that you map to, right? Now, I'm, I don't know anything. I know there was effort to put OpenSSL or do SSL in the kernel. I don't know much about that. I know it's not straightforward. Maybe there were ways, but as far as I know, I don't think you can do SSL easily in the kernel. You can do TCP, IP in the kernel. With that said, that's what I wanted to talk about here. Zero copy. IO Uring. It's getting better and better and better. Uh, I hope people give it a chance. I hope because it's, it's, it's just getting better and better. And they really, really deserve 
uh, to be starting to be used right? in the wild. See you in the next one.